Hello and welcome to News Click. For the last several weeks, the country has been discussing a uniform civil code for which a draft still doesn't exist. Why is this draft so much in discussion without existing? We are going to discuss this issue with Mr. Javed Anand. He's been an activist against communalism for several decades and he's going to try and explain what the responses to this discussion could be, why they matter and especially for the Muslim communities of India. Mr. Javed Anand, thank you very much for joining NewsClick for this very crucial issue. You know, we have a discussion going around all over the country about a uniform civil code for which there is no draft. So I just want to ask you, why are we discussing it? Good question, but uh, if I may uh, seek your indulgence for a moment. Uh, I was part of an organization called Muslims for Secular Democracy, which was formed in 2003. And it had been reincarnated in 2016 as uh, Indian Muslims for Secular Democracy. In, before the 2004 elections, the BJP had again talked about the Uniform Civil Code as being part of the agenda. On behalf of Muslims for Secular Democracy, we sent a telegram to the then Union Home Minister, Mr. Adwani, saying, we are very interested in a Uniform Civil Code. Can we please have, have a draft? Have a look at a draft if you have one. Uh, but uh, that was 2004, today is 2023, and still there is no draft in sight. Now, of course, we have one from Uttarakhand, which we still don't know what it looks like, right. but there have been reports in papers. So, so here's the thing that you have written recently in the Indian Express about how this is a sort of majoritarian tactic and that no, but people should try not to fall into this trap. But the question you also raise is that on the one hand, you have women who want a gender just law. And on the other hand, you have a government which weaponizes the law against the communities. So my question is, how do you escape this pitfall? It is not just women, but a lot of men, progressive men also want to see a gender just, religion neutral, uniform civil code. Uh, the 21st Law Commission had made certain recommendations which said that uh, a uniform civil code is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage, but they had suggested uh, uh, changes in uh, uh, and codification in different personal laws to make them more gender just. No action on that was taken, of course. So that is one part of the story. <laughs> the same government that is now talking about the uniform civil code, they've been in power since 2014. What prevented them all these years uh, from implementing it. That is one part of the question. The other part of the question is that they know, I mean, that uh, whether we will actually have a uniform civil code this time around remains to be seen. But this has been their tactic since 1998. They raised the issue of bogey of the uniform civil code. The Muslim clergy kind of uh, goes up in arms, crying out Sharia in danger, Islam in danger. We will not tolerate any interference in our religion from the judiciary, from the government, from the courts, etc., etc. And their purpose is served. Because then the message goes out to their constituency and their constituency, they're constantly trying to increase. So look, Muslims don't believe in the law of the land. They want their own Sharia. And uh, that kind of uh, adds to their uh, uh, vote bank. And th that is it. On, at the same time, there is also this unfortunate thing that the secular parties have never taken any initiative whatsoever in nudging, if nothing else, the Muslim community to saying that, look, you know, uh, there, there have been reforms in the, uh, even if insufficient, there have been reforms in the uh, Hindu personal law, there have been reforms in the Christian personal law. <clears throat> there have been reforms in very many Muslim countries, the same things, same Sharia that they are talking about here, but here the ulama, the All India Personal Law Board, the Jamaat Islami, the Jamaat Ulama Hind, and the, the whole lot of them refuse to take a single step. So if you're not going to do it, somebody else is going to do it. Unfortunately, it's not the secular parties mm -hmm. because they, it, it is a secular issue. The question of gender justice is a secular issue. It's right. not a communal issue. But uh, uh, the BJP finds it very convenient to its own, uh, suit its own political agenda. So we are in this pitfall, if you like. But the important point is that progressives should not keep quiet. At least they should kind of uh, put forward this thing and ask for a draft. Where is the draft? 
Right. What would a gender just religion neutral law look like? Can you go into some of the details which you, which have been actually discussed for over two decades now? We've been talking about what that law would look like, but just for our viewers, once again, to recap what that would look like. Well, I am no expert on uh, family laws generally or personal laws generally, but I can talk about in the context of the existing uh, Muslim personal. All right. For for example, there was, I mean, until a few years ago, triple talaq, which means uh, the male uh, husband's right to divorce his wife in an instant without any reason on a whim. That fortunately has gone. But there is still is the issue of polygamy. And the issue is not how many Muslim men have two wives or three wives or whatever it is, but how can it be justified at all? So there is polygamy. There is the uh, shameful practice of halala which uh, for your view, viewers benefit halala means that if a man and a woman, if in a fit of, for example, a husband kind of divorces his wife and the next moment he regrets it, the Malvi will tell him that, sorry, it's too late. The only way possible for you to reunite is for her to marry somebody else. And there are halala centers in this country and in the UK and in Pakistan and in many other places, right. which organize these one night weddings. Right. For the, sim for, for the simple purpose of that marriage getting consummated and that hus second husband divorces her so that she can, she can reunite. This, this is a horrible, simple practice which needs to go. There is the question of unequal uh, share in inheritance which needs to go. There is the question of custody of uh, uh, the woman's right to the wife's right, divorce wife's right to custody of children. That is that Muslim men and women cannot adopt. Right. At the same time, in my knowledge, uh, irretrievable uh, breakdown of marriage, no fault divorce. The, the provision exists only in Muslim personal. Now, this is something that should be included elsewhere too. I mean, in, the, in a uniform civil court, for example, is this is something that should apply to all uh, communities. It would be a good for progressive measure. Now, you know, one of the things about a UCC is that you know, every conversation happens in a context. You mentioned a lot of other countries, uh, Muslim majority countries, Islamic countries, where actually laws have been uh, reformed and changed and modernized. In India, is it difficult because of the circumstances? You have a Muslim population, which is in a minority compared to the Hindu uh, majority. And then you have a certain kind of government in place. Is that what is actually always in the way of reform we were to put forward that argument for the period 2014 onwards what about the period between 1947 and 19 2014 those were long many years muslim women's organizations in particular for the last 20 25 years have been kind of shouting from the rooftops to kind of uh, prepared a, uh, one of the muslim women's organizations for example is prepared a draft for the codification of Muslim personal law because Muslim personal law as it exists is not even codified. So it's a, subject to the interpretation of the local Molvi or Mufti or whatever it is, Kazi. So, but, but there's been no response to that. The stand has forever been that Sharia laws are divine laws, which is rubbish, which is not true. But because they, they claim to be divine, therefore they are God-given and therefore they cannot change uh, till doomsday come. In which case, what are we to make of these Muslim majority countries, including countries which call themselves Islamic? Have they gone out of the fold of Islam? Is that what the Jamiat Islam and the All, All India Personal Board want to tell us? Right, sir. So, you know, the point is also that how long can women wait? There are progressive uh, women, Muslim women's groups who are, you know, this time turning around and saying that, look, well, it doesn't matter what kind of government we have. If there is a shot at some reform, some change, some amendment, let us take this chance. Do you think that's a valid logic? I think so. I mean, how long How long should they wait? How long should they wait? They've waited for 20 years, more over 20 years. I mean, I, I can remember from the period 1980s onward. Then yes. 15 plus 23, we are talking about close to what? 40 plus, around 40 years. That's and, right. And uh, I mean, by this logic of this is not the best time, when will be the best time for uh, gender justice? There never will be a best time for gender. Maybe the best time will be when there is a draft which is actually discussed openly in the public and, and everybody is in, involved in that process. Is, is that a precondition? Well, that 
I mean, that that's the first step, quite honestly. If, if the purpose of this thing is not to use it only as a kind of stick to beat Muslims with, the uh, the same prime minister who talked about our Muslim Bahan Beti. Yes. It, it says nothing about Bilkis, justice of Bilkis Bano. It says nothing about to the wives and sisters and daughters of those who get lynched. It says nothing about when uh, uh, websites for auction of Muslim women are opened up. Nothing, nothing when there's call for genocide of Muslims, for economic boycott of Muslims. So therefore, it, it raises a whole lot of suspicion, quite understandably, in the mind of a lot of people. Leave aside the person on board and uh, medics like that who have who are forever in office. But even in the mind of progressive Muslims, there is a question of what kind of a draft will these, what kind of uh, a uniform civil court will these people bring? Now the newspaper suggests that Adivasis will be excluded from the ambit of this thing. Yes. One says something about Christians being excluded. What kind of a uniform civil court will we have if this is a, this one is excluded and that one is excluded? So the draft is the starting point, certainly. Without a draft, we are, we are, I mean, all talking in the air. So it seems also from the news reports which you just referred to that the Uniform Civil Code is actually not a uniform. It's not supposed to be a uniform civil code. It's just supposed to be tinkering with or changing uh, Muslim practices and Muslim law uh, and Mohammedan law and, and then making a big noise about it. Prime Minister uh, is very concerned, particularly concerned about Muslim brand babies as, as uh, uh, self-professed uh, 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 or self-proclaimed, but only so far as family laws are concerned. Outside family laws, Muslim brand babies do not matter. So it, it does look like, I mean, uh, it's going to end up actually meaning effectively some changes, reforms in Muslim, Muslim personal law. But that can hardly be called uniform civil court. If, if I'm getting you right, this government, despite the communal rhetoric and despite its actions and inaction when it came to the Muslims and what was done to them, they still seem to have latched on to something which a section of Muslims would agree with and therefore find that support. Maybe it's a section of Muslim women, maybe it's the progressive Muslim groups which will think that, okay, this is the best time for us. And so they are in a position to maybe push through certain changes. See, they don't need uh, Muslim men, Muslim women or whoever to do that. They have enough majority in parliament to, to steamroll uh, their agenda if they want, wish to. I mean, whether it gets challenged later on in the courts remains to be seen. So they don't need anybody. But if that were to happen, if that were to happen, I think a lot of uh, uh, Muslim women and uh, uh, even men, progressive men, would welcome it to the extent that polygamy is now gone. That now Muslim women, by law, have the right to equal share in property. That would be well. Would there also be a conservative backlash like we saw after Shabano? I do not see that happening at all. It is quite clear, uh, reading from the statement after statement, I've been following this issue quite uh, closely. And everywhere the point is being made, we must not take this issue to the streets. Right. For quite some time now, Muslims have realized that taking issues to the street, whether it was the Shabano case or the Babri Masjid case, plays against them, plays into the hands of the uh, Hindu majoritarians. So taking to the streets is not an option. What they will say, like somebody was saying the other day, is that uh, uh, if a husband marries a second wife, Again, even against the wishes of the first wife. If the wife still believes in the Sharia, and that was the Mongi Sahib will tell him, tell her, you don't make a noise, don't complain. Let the law say whatever it does. Right. Just changing the law doesn't change society. But it also does, in the sense that the in instances of triple talaq have come, out, come down dramatically. Though uh, there is uh, one thing for which there is very little statistics. I believe that a lot of Muslim husbands who divorce their wives are simply, instead of divorcing their wives and attacking the law, uh, criminal law, they are deserting them. And for a deserted wife, there is no uh, effective recourse at all in our country. Not for Hindu deserted women, not for Muslim deserted women. My final question, I guess, would be, is it okay to do the right thing or a part of the right thing, but in the wrong way? Would, would it work out? It seems as if the government is doing a, the right thing or a part of the right thing, a part of the reform that... For the, for, the, for the wrong reasons. Exactly. Is that fair? Is that acceptable? 
it would be acceptable i'm saying for a lot of uh, uh, progressive muslim men and women only because there is no option left the ulama have left us simply no option whatsoever since 1947 to repeat what i said earlier also it's not just a question of what has happened since 2014 where were you what were you doing when for 40 years muslim women and some muslim men at least were arguing for reforms codification of muslim personal laws you just stood your gun and even after the incident as you might be aware even after the personal law was triple talaq was uh, outlawed by the supreme court before the criminalization thing happened the all india personal law board at its board meeting said that while we respect the verdict of the supreme court sharia position still stands that if a husband has divorced his wife uh, the, in a fit of temper uh, uh, in a whim in a fit of temper or whatever it is that is still valid so from looked at from their perspective a woman who's been divorced through triple talaq will keep quiet and not go and complain anywhere and the law will stay in its place except that that is not happening too much i think too many muslims are not just the ulama are, are the story part of the story too many Muslims realize the implications of triple talaq and the kind of criminal uh, law that it might uh, uh, trigger into action. But in the current scenario, minus absent a draft, does it seem likely that this will actually leave the political realm and enter into the actual hard work of drafting reforms and making the, them acceptable, discussing them, that's not going to happen as far as you can see. Yeah, but it looks to me that uh, either which way the BJP stands to gain. It can, it can either kind of uh, turn around and say, listen, you know, we want uh, this law, it has been part of our agenda, we are concerned about our Muslim ban betis, but look, the Muslim ulama are opposing and look at the secular parties. Look at the secular parties. You know, they don't want a gender just law. And that will kind of uh, be politically, uh, derive some political gain out of it. Or they can implement it and say, jo kaha wahi kia. But it seems very unfair to women, non-Muslim women, who are also in need of some legislative changes which would help them. So I think with the, if, if the draft is kind of a, uh, not of the kind that people like you and I and we uh, agree with, there is still the court of India, Supreme Court of India, where we can take our grievance to and hopefully we'll uh, get redressed there, from there. But that is still a step away. We still don't know what kind of a draft we are to expect. Right, Mr. Anand. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you.